<laughs> All right. Welcome back, everybody. Whoops, as I'm smacking my microphone. Can you tell I'm nervous? Um, fine. We are at Crits and Giggles 20th session. Wow. Um, wow. Which means we, we were mostly on schedule. I think we had like one or two blips in the radar. So we're, we're pretty much at like full baby. 40 weeks. Nuts. It's been real. Let's go. Just completed a pregnancy. Yeah. Good job, Kay. <laughs> hey. Human pregnancy. D and uh, uh, and, and we job. didn't start anything on fire or kill anybody. Yay. Hey. Oh, well. I mean, well we killed a hot number of people. We killed a few people. It's debatable. <laughs> we dropped a dude. Well, we dropped a dude off of a building. D just good for on you for, for making that a collective thing. <laughs> and also, to be fair, we got set on fire. So you I mean, did get set on fire, as that. well as like a whole bunch of other people. Okay, I retract that statement, um, but we're all still here. <laughs> um, okay, so if you guys remember, I we we had a bit of a teaser last session a couple weeks ago, um, and I I just can't hold it in anymore. So I I wish I had like visuals or something to accompany this. I don't, but just to let everybody know. Um, Couple quick things. Crits and Giggles is officially trademarked. What? what? I put <laughs> I put an application to get I got all the stuff going for that like a couple yeah. months before we even set this group up. And it just went through I... yeah, it was like a full year. So um with that, I don't know if you guys pull the stream up or anything when you when you watch, but today's title is dedicated to now that we have a trademark a new name for this show Ooh. it is no longer the bland generic princes of the apocalypse plus it is <gasps> the tenements of the great rift oh my god Ooh, that's that's so good. So cool. <laughs> that is interesting and again something i have to put on the board now yep <laughs> <laughs> tenements um, of the great rift so uh, for anybody who does, I knew I know we have at least a handful of people who watch our show on YouTube. You're going to see a big revamp of the titling and descriptions of the shows and everything on the YouTube. And this is the flagship show for what is now officially Crits and Giggles <laughs> in in legal senses. So. Um, congratulations to you guys, and thank you to you guys for being my first group with that. And uh, it's been a wild ride, and it ain't stopping anytime soon. Wow. So, yeah. That's crazy. That's wow. wild. Amazing. Congratulations. Now, now people, <laughs> now people on the YouTube channel are just going to see uh, Tenements of the Rift and be so confused yep. about what's going like on. Like everything Slip. switched over. <laughs> no, I'm going to redo the intro video for the channel and everything. Um, nice. And included in that will be a little, a fun little blurb about our meeting, my like AV troubles in the first two sessions and how things got shifted around and all that stuff. But yeah, the cat's out of the bag. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, so with all of that, getting back into this show, um, we hit a pretty significant milestone with our last session. So um, I would like to, I know we started kind of doing this every time, but then I kind of drifted away from it because I didn't personally feel like it was adding too much, um, but uh, rather doing this at sort of key moments or key points in the campaign um, feels, feels a little bit better. So I'm going to do a brief recap of what happened last session. And then we'll go around and have you guys introduce yourselves and your characters briefly. And then we'll do one of those sort of um, touch points. What are like the big things that have happened, been happening? What are some conflicts that we feel like are resolved, unresolved, loose ends? We're gonna do the whole Pepe Silva board um, with this discussion if we have to. And then we'll, we'll get right into playing. Does that sound okay with you guys? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, I'm going to turn this down since since it's just going to be us talking for a bit. Um, so in our last session, we started at the or approaching. We, we retconned a little bit. We started with 
approaching the what we knew to be uh, River Guard Keep, the fourth of our known four locations to go to. You have this general um, mission, if you will, of figuring out what the fuck's going on with these these cults, these elemental cults. Um, most of you have had some sort of either personal, excuse me, or or faction-driven tie to this missing delegation of folks that was on its way to Red Larch, among other places. And then at, to this point, you've confirmed that that group of people was attacked in transit. Um, you've found some of them uh, hidden away within at least one of the keeps. I know at least Broldenthar, right? Um, yeah. And then, uh, so you know that they were attacked. Some of them were killed. Um, some of them were captured. Everything was scattered. That included like important documents as well as people. Um, and some of that is starting to come, come together, come back to you guys. So, this is the fourth keep um, that you guys knew you needed to go to for some form of information gathering and the approach with this one was different from the others um well i guess the approach wasn't too different but the outcome was um you were after after barely talking your way in <laughs> uh just by a hair uh you guys run into uh Jolliver grimjaw a large burly hairy guy who at a, at a very creepy turn from the other folks you've met to this point uh, who are associated with the cults knew uh, an awful lot about you guys and basically just like spat it out with this pompous attitude. I know too, I know so much about you. Um, you're you're kind of in over your head sort of approach to you guys. Um, and he and his goonies just kind of went for it and and tried to capture you. Um, you basically mopped the floor with them, <laughs> um, but not without at least one person escaping. Um, and I forget, was it Iz that went down into that yeah. cavern and sort of found that tunnel that you are surmising that person went down? Um, yeah. And then, so you were, after that, you were kind of like in and out. You guys took an approach of don't kill the main guy, only knock him out, cleared out everybody else, and then said, we're peacing out. Uh, Cal got a little bit more of a lay of the land with other happenings at the, do we call that a marina? Like the little, sure. sort of, kind like of. the little in and out area. Yeah, just the water Area. Like a waterway outpost. Yeah, of thing. It, like, like it's too small to really call it a marina, but mm. it, like a single or two boat operation <laughs> going on. And it was That's noted like, that um, one one boat had a, a pair of folks that seemed to be like working on it, loading or unloading. Um, and then and then you guys pieced out with Jolliver Grimshaw unconscious in your custody at this point. And you you did see that like the other guards at the, you know, that were in their sort of posts on the walls of Riverguard Keep on your way out sort of had this dumbfounded look of what the heck's going on um, as you guys just walked out. Um, you're on your way back toward Red Larch, if I understood correctly. Um, and I, I think that's where we ended, right? Did I miss anything? Uh, Cal saw uh, on one of the boats that were being un uh, that were being loaded uh, a sarcophagus with the gauntlets that looked like uh, the same one we found at uh, Sacred Stone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cal did see that. Yes. And then I think that's it that I can remember. Okay. Um, so for the the sake for the fact that we are at a sort of major milestone having at least been to all four keeps at this point um let's go around real quick and do those character introductions again and then sort of put on the table if there's anything in particular in game that 
you in or out of character or both um are are like focused on as far as narratives plot lines any unresolved conflicts anything along those lines um cal would you mind starting um sure um i mean i'm hold on let's see if i can actually get the whole thing Ooh, the whole name i am <laughs> califras rog rogsaknar Ragfuknar. <laughs> I'm Cal. <laughs> and I'm a dragonborn barbarian. Um, retired with honors uh, as part of the Lord's Alliance and done many a duty on different um, different military-esque things uh along my career uh and now sort of freelancing uh with this um with this quest that we were brought on um yeah i don't i don't know if cal really has anything at this point at this point he's less about putting two and two together and more about just making sure the surrounding areas and everything is just going to be safe. Um, and there's a, there's a little bit of trust issues going on with some of that, but I think for the most part, he is just ready to, to clean up the, 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 people from around here who are up to no good and causing some ruckus and doing all that stuff with this cults and everything like that and so he just wants to yeah like not deal with these bad people anymore and then once he's cleaned up this area maybe he can finally go and enjoy retirement okay awesome um world Hi, I'm Worrell. Um, I am an Air Genasi Bard, College of Eloquence. Uh, I do a lot of talking. Half of it's out my ass. The other half is usually pretty true. <laughs> um, As bards I, do. Yeah, yeah. I shoot for it being true if I have to like stretch it a skosh, but you know. Um, I. Control. Exactly. Um, I, you know, used, I, I'm a bard. I used to like travel around with a troop and stuff and they all decided to settle down. And um, I was kind of like coaxed into joining a, a, a faction. And then all of a sudden my friend disappeared. And then all of a sudden I was like, I guess I should find her and maybe not, you know, just sit here and be a bard and maybe I'll be an outside bard again. <laughs> so now I'm here. Maybe I'll um, be an outdoor cat. <laughs> an outdoor cat. <laughs> Meow. Um, and she's really, uh, I feel like she's really, I feel like she thought she was hot shit about like two days ago when we were like exiting the, um, the monastery. Like super, super full of confidence. Everything was cool, great, and tight. And then all of a sudden, like, everything kind of, like, changed around her. Like, she was like, oh, I, you know, like, Taryn's cool. Now Taryn's changing colors. Um, <laughs> oh, Gert's cool. Now Gert's, like, really deep into this book. And, like, like it's a little scary for some reason. Um, oh, Is is cool. Oh, Is might be a demon now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who's to say? So, no idea. Um, She's just so really all, tired. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like, these things have changed very quickly like within the last like 24 hours and then we get to river guard and this guy knows too much fucking information about her and it like hit her too fast and now she trusts nothing um and like all of the like wow this is crazy that it happened before was like suddenly amplified in the last 24 hours um so she doesn't even know what the goal is right now um <laughs> because I don't really know if any of us do. I think I, I ideally, you know, end all of this so that the whole area is safe. Um, because every every <clears throat> time we learn something new, like the 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 stakes, like just keep getting higher. Um, and there's just like a lot of stakes. So <laughs> for a map. I don't know if we'll be able to eat all of the steak. So yeah. many steaks. 
stuff to do. Yeah. All right. So that's that's oral. All right, Iz, you're up. Oh no. Okay. Hi. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just an introduction. <laughs> okay. My actual name is Ash, but I go by Iz here. Uh, Iz is a changeling rogue uh, who used to be in the thief roguish archetype, but due to cool narrative fun stuff, uh, she's now in the phantom roguish archetype, hence the now permanent face paint that makes it look like uh, like a Dia de los Muertos kind of skull thing. <laughs> it's cool. Um, she originally got into all this because she wanted to provide a better life for her family uh, and thought why not join some sort of uh, alliance and help people out? And it's turned into so much more than that. <laughs> um, if, you know, we've we've traveled across the land and gained allies and gained hippogriffs, and <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's kind of a lot to take on for five people to try and shape the destiny of an entire region but i think we've kind of taken that in stride and uh are doing our dang best um also uh it's got like a really strange message like a couple weeks ago a couple weeks ago uh yes. saying that her brother was taken and the homie don't play that and we haven't really <laughs> found any information other than Hey, maybe it was the people at the Sacred Stone Monastery. No, it's actually totally not. So, kind of a lot of ups and downs and attempting to figure that out. Um, but, and that's yeah. found family brother, right? Um, yes. Not like biological brother in game. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the the family that she always refers to are the people that have adopted her. Her actual family, she knows of, does not talk to. Um, yeah. Yeah, really digging the group dynamics uh, and how that <laughs> ebbs and flows every day of, hey, we're super cool, and then what the fuck is happening over here? I don't trust you at all kind of thing. It's it's, it's really it, cool. It is a dynamic that's been uh, tumultuous on like an in-game day-to-day basis. Yeah. For sure. Uh, and that is partially by design and, and partially uh i mean you you guys are role playing through stuff that influences that so mm -hmm. it's been Absolutely. it's been wild as i said before <laughs> anywho the, the the best way to describe what's been going on is back when we were at sacred stone and accidentally found the guest quarters uh mm -hmm. that can yeah. just summarize everything that's been going on <laughs> yeah great um, way to put that Taryn, you are up, by the way. Oh, uh, cool. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Logan, and I've been playing Taryn, Taryn Harris. He started off as a, uh, a light cleric, uh, but thanks to some, uh, both the release of Tasha's and some uh, internal conflict due to experiences that he's had in game, uh, he went from being a yellow chiefling to being now currently a normal uh 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 we were like concurrent i guess uh red chiefling at the moment uh with deep violet eyes uh and has been kind of uh putting uh putting himself through an actual crisis of what he really believes in as he's been going to places like the Sacred Stone Monastery and now Riverguard Keep where things uh he or where he sees things and then those kind of coincide with how he had grown up in his uh temple and now are and now is kind of searching for both a either a new deity who will take in what he believes uh and uh trying to think of other stuff to say because i don't really know how to explain it <laughs> it's uh, all good <laughs> uh party wise uh 
Terran's kind of concerned about how Iz went into uh, went back in to see our friend Renwick, Renwick, mm-hmm. and then came out uh, super tired, and then woke up the next morning with the uh, epic eyeliner. But <laughs> he's 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 trying not to be pushy with it and see where what happens. Uh, and is very uh, suspicious of what's going on back in Red Larch. Uh, oh, yeah, I, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, okay, no worries. Um, so I'm sure we'll come back to that uh, in character as after we're done, you know, talking through everything at the moment. So, um, Gert, you are going to wrap this up for us. We can't hear uh, you. We can't hear you. You're. you're... Technical difficulties. There we go. There it is. There we go. Uh, (laughs) I'm Sam. I play Gert, uh, who is a life cleric Asmar. Um, Asmar, Asmar. I still don't. I'm still bad at that. Um, I'm not sure I know. (laughs) I just say Asmar. Uh, Right. Let's just compromise and call her an ice lemur. (laughs) (laughs) I like it. Um, Yeah. Gert uh, is currently really invested in the tomes um, and trying to decipher all of that because she thinks that it's important to where we're going and, you know, just like figuring out what we need to know. Um, But also she's got some hippogriff friends who are also (laughs) very important to her in her life. Um, she, uh, so I'm not saying that this is like supposed to be what a life cleric is, but let's be honest, (laughs) Gert's a bleeding heart. Like she just is. And so anything that she doesn't think can survive on their own, she wants to make sure that they're going to be okay. Um, and whether that's birds or children or <laughs> you know <laughs> whatever like yeah she was she was helping Taryn check in on some hellhounds at one point so you know <laughs> they did not like uh, that no a, no they weren't a, a fan they brief weren't brief. a fan <laughs> I mean, for the record, I was also not a fan. Uh, <laughs> but damn it hunts. if you didn't try, right? I, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think her biggest, I mean, of course, she's concerned about this jolly shithead who <laughs> no, knows yeah, everything. Middle name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, fun. Jolifer like, S. Grimjaw. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think, like, she assumes that everybody else has a handle on that, and she wants to get back to her book. Because that's... It's sort of taken over her thoughts right now, so... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, with that... The, if I'm correct, and please correct me if I'm not, um, you guys are about halfway um, from Riverguard, heading as straight line as possible toward Red Larch with this still unconscious Jaller Grimjaw. Um, yeah. It's my understanding that your intent is to get Whatever, whatever information you can from him, whether before, during, or after, or before or after the point you get to Red Larch, um, I won't, I won't spoil the you know potential role play and in the moment stuff by asking ahead of time what kind of information you want to get, but um, that that's essentially where we are, and you guys are starting a long rest at this point, so. Um, we're going to do whatever you guys want to do for 
setting up camp, settling in for the night. First general question, um, because we have him unconscious, how does being unconscious and taking a long rest happen? Slash, do we have to just like keep slapping him awake in the middle of the night to keep him at one hit point or like <laughs> keep him down without him actually physically dying? That's a good question. So, um, he is, so unconsciousness, um, well, non-lethal damage, therefore getting knocked unconscious in fifth edition is um, I roll a die mm -hmm. to see how many hours the person is unconscious before they wake up on their own. Okay. Um, until then, we basically treat it like sleeping, just involuntarily. So you could like wake him up um, at any given point. He will come, he will wake up with one hit point. So you'll, you'll know when he does come back to consciousness, like he's he's super weak. It's not like he's mm -hmm. getting a long rest by being unconscious. Um, and, and and yeah, what you suggested is entirely possible. If he if he comes to and you want to just knock him out again, you could just whap him one, uh, again okay. and just knock him out for another indeterminate amount of time. Um, exhaustion will settle in depending on how long he's like repeatedly knocked out without legitimately resting, that sort of thing. Mm. So, yeah, does that answer the question? Yes. Okay. And and for viewers, we did have, uh, we had at least started a discussion about keeping things, relatively speaking, humane as far as having a prisoner. So like, um, what I'll call minor torture, I think we said is, is okay. Like beating a guy up to get him to talk sort of thing but we're not going to be doing anything graphic. We're not going to be doing anything like super torturous. <laughs> um, that sort of thing. So I think, I think we're all on at least a similar enough page with that, that I don't need to worry about it. And you know, when things happen, we'll just figure it out as it goes. So at this point he is still unconscious. If, if that's what we were looking at and uh, we're, we're like at dusk. Um, so, uh, guys, I had a plan for, um, interrogation, and it would ideally work, uh, after the sun goes down. So if everyone doesn't mind staying up a little bit later than normal, uh, that would be helpful. Otherwise, we can do it on the road, but I have an idea that might work for tonight. Cool, what's the plan? Uh, First, I would I would want to see if uh, either of the hippogriffs would take a passenger, and uh, I figured I would give him a scare by maybe dropping him a very high distance from in the air, and then picking him up as uh, as he falls. Now I I could do this by uh, I could pick him up on my own because I. I can fly in darkness now. And it would be less risky than trying to get one of the hippogriffs to catch him. For the record, this is a big dude. So there is a uh, encumbrance to consider. <laughs> he is quite heftier than you. And also, are the hippogriffs trained well enough to pick him back up, follow through with these instructions? We've been right. we've been super lucky with our hippogriffs. Yeah. <laughs> Claudius Claudius loves me. I know this. But also, um he Yes, honey, I know. Um, <laughs> Who's Claudius? This is but, our sixth player, yeah. Carla. <laughs> yes. Um very but, important. But like like Carla, um Claudius has a rough time <laughs> sometimes listening. Um, and so if he doesn't listen just right, we could lose that prisoner that we were so keen to, uh, to capture. Mm. I, I will remind the group just in, just to make sure, um, in all fairness, everything's on the table, um, that should be. You did, not two days ago, um, work through having Claudius pick something up and carry it. Uh, mm -hmm. twice actually. So two days ago and yes. the day before that. So yes. 
plausible? Absolutely. But I also rolled real good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that those were things and not a person. Exactly. Like, oh, and, it's true. And it's very much like Exactly. Yeah, it was here to here, not okay, here's a plan. <laughs> Un unless this involves thinking. I mean, my idea was not to have the hippogriff pick him up, but to have him as a passenger. Like, to have him tied up and sitting on the back. So, while how we, would he... While we ascend. How would he get... Or are you saying, like, someone pushes him off? And then... Oh, and, so this, and then he gets saved? So this ability that I have lets me fly in darkness, so I figured I would push him off and fall with him and then as we got closer to the ground I would fly and pick him up. Oh, so oh sort of you like were going to break the fall. Sky dive. I Ooh. was going to break the fall, yes. So, a couple of thoughts on that. Uh, one, he is bigger than you. Um, two, I don't believe that he is a person that can be scared into talking. I think we have to like drain his brain into him not understanding that he's not lying. Whoa, what? <laughs> so so I, I'm, from what I understand of the plan is you want to scare him into thinking he's about to die, giving up all of his shit, and then catching him being like, haha, you didn't die. Is that correct? Um, somewhat, yes. But cool. my last part of the plan was I would do it for three minutes or three times, depending on how long it would take in between. Drop him a fourth time in which you could levitate and make him fall slowly at four five seconds. Right. My thought is I don't think this is a person that can be broken that way. Like, I don't think I don't think he is going to scare into giving us information and telling us the truth. I think we're going to have to wear down his defenses so that he can't not tell us the truth. Like, I think we have to like my plan was unsettling words him and then also make him like zone of truth so that zone. we that's i think that's the most mm. way we can get information out of him is if we like literally magic him into having to tell us the truth hmm. because if we give him an option he's not going to take it right yeah can we like how many how many things can compound okay i was thinking make, about this yeah to make his stuff go down so like, can I bane him and then somebody else do something and that so that? Like, yeah, um, the only limitation is going to be the individuals in the group. Like, you can only concentrate on one spell at a time per person. Sure. All that jazz. Yeah. Um, as far as you guys teaming up to compound effects of multiple things together mm -hmm. between more than one of you, absolutely. Yeah. Still curse. Yeah. Wonderful. I always, I always pick the wrong. And and that's not thing. limited to like spells either. You could you can right. combine like a spell from Gert with a spell from Whirl with mm -hmm. uh, intimidation from Cal, um, and and uh, you know maybe a good cop bad cop from Cal and uh, and um, Taryn, and then is stares menacingly for another intimidate. You can stack sure. anything that you guys Just can think of. Anything. Uh, what does uh, what does your curse do, world? Uh, so unsettling words. Um, the creature has to subtract uh, a D eight from their next saving throw. Um, if he's ex if we can get him to exhaustion, like if we can tell that he's exhausted, that's an automatic disadvantage, right? On skill checks, yeah. On skill checks. So if we if we if not we can get him exhausted, yet. oh, would this be a save? But Depend yeah, depends on the spell. Yeah. Well, yeah, mo most so spells is, is are safe. Yeah. If, um, but then, like, if he tries to lie to curse. you, that's a skill check instead. So, you know, that would be a right. disadvantage. Right. But if he's zoned. Oh, I, I'm. My thought process is to just get him to knock him down so that we can zone of truth him so that we can, like, get to as close to guarantee that he's going to have to tell us the truth in the okay. zone of truth. Tell us as much of the truth as we can get out of him. Uh, just so everyone knows, uh, before we do this, anyone who is in the zone of truth must also tell it. So unless you, unless everyone wants to be at risk of giving him answers, 
I would suggest standing outside of the radius. Gotcha. Uh, um, which is, I'm just I'll, gonna... I'll tell what the radius is, but go ahead while I look there. So... With... Is Bane saving throws? Yes, Bane is saving yeah, throws. But <laughs> my question is, uh, how charismatic is this, is this dude? Um, I'm not going to make you do a check for that. Um, mm -hmm. you, I mean, based on the way he was talking to you guys yesterday, mm -hmm. you can probably assume he's kind of up there. Okay. Yeah. So Bane would be rough because that's a charisma check. Um, but he might also fail that and then have to subtract from all of his other charisma saves. So, right. well, so yeah, like if if he fails uh, the charisma save, right? Um, let's see. I got all prepared so, for this, and now you guys are throwing stuff at me that I wasn't thinking of. So, <laughs> if if we bane him, that's if we bane him, that's him subtracting a d4. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. If we if we uh, unsettling words him, that's subtracting a d8. So that's subtracting no matter what two, up to twelve, mm -hmm. from if we're gonna stack them, from okay. whatever that roll is. Okay. I mean, do we think two is like okay enough? Sure. Is there anything else that any of us can throw at him? Can we double bane him? Because I can also bane. Uh, from two different sources. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's subtracting at least three up to. 16 from what his saving throw is depending on how things go I, I two veins just to knock him down so that we can zone of truth him mm -hmm. we should also maybe think of what we want to ask him in said zone of truth this is a great idea <laughs> <laughs> um you can um for for the sake of making sure you guys can understand how your your like stacking everything can work. It would be most beneficial for you to cast one bane, wait for the result, and then cast the second because the second would utilize the failure of the first if he does fail. Yes. Uh, and I, if we wait until morning, I can also uh, throw another bane on top of that. Triple bane. Can you? Damn. Can you? Can you bane and zone of truth because they're both concentration. The zone of truth is not concentration. Okay. So, yeah, Just checking. That's cool. Um, uh, so what is the the zone? 20? Uh, 15 foot radius. Okay. He already knows fucking everything about me, so let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> so angry. I, uh, you know what? Just for the sake of... I want to rattle off everything he said to you guys again. Um, yes, please. Make sure, let's put it fresh on everybody's mind. Good, because um, I didn't remember it from two weeks ago. <laughs> um... It, I rattled through it pretty quick, so um, it's so all good. Bad. So, is he said about you an aimless wanderlust with a soft spot for a now lost brother? Um, Taryn, a double boy who'll piss his pants at the mere scent of a bad rumor. <laughs> Ooh, that was... <laughs> That was, yeah, that was pretty rough. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I didn't hold back. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Um, I love it, though. It's awesome. Whirl the genie girl on the path to find daddy. So mad. Um, <laughs> I don't think you understand how fast my heart was beating. <laughs> oh, then I did my job. Um, also, full stop, when you, when the very beginning, when they were like, you know, like, don't let the air beast in, uh, when you were talking about the hippogriffs, fully thought that that was world, too, and I was like, rude. <laughs> <laughs> that was, oh, my God. That, yeah. I thought that was, uh, uh, I thought that was, I was like, like fucking that, that one was full on in the moment. I did not have that one prepared, <laughs> so I, I forgot about that one. Um, um, I really got into it. Uh, <laughs> Cal, the washed up general, and Gert, the cleric who doesn't even know where she comes from. Yeah, they flung some shit at you guys. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, I was so mad. I'm, I, my heart's starting to beat at that again. <laughs> Savvy. It was, Woo. That was, that was uh, an intense uh, a couple of minutes. That was Definitely. so intense. 
Yeah, and his goonies just kind of went for it. Oh, um, you would have also noticed that, like, uh, actually, no, I guess that's not very different. I was going to say this is like the first time you guys are experiencing like non-human-esque creatures, but you did experience that at at least three of the haunted keeps, right? Mm -hmm. And we got uh, uh, umber. Do you mean like like like, uh, like the trans trans uh, shapeshifter? That's the word I was looking. In in this case, yes, there was one person who changed into a snake. Um, mm -hmm. But then there was like there was a straight up fire elemental at Scarlet Moon Hall, mm -hmm. um, and a couple yes. of people who just like straight up morphed into werewolves and ran. Mm -hmm. um, and those like imp things or the the little uh, uh, yeah, the, yeah. Mag fire, yeah. the little fire mag boys, mag yeah. yeah. <laughs> The Magmites, yeah. Um, yeah and the Arakakra at the top of... Uh, Arakakra, yep. And my dad. Um, <laughs> and, and, yeah. and then, <laughs> what was the other one? Oh, yeah, like the Ogres and Argrims yeah. and Minotaurs at Sacred Stone, yeah. And my buddy, the Ogre. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> drool. 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 Oh, drool. buddy. <laughs> Um, okay, so so I should correct that statement to like outside of once you guys ventured outside of um, towns. I don't want to say civilization because that wouldn't necessarily be that yeah. wouldn't feel right. But outside of like towns has been when you guys have experienced like non-human things. Anywho. Um, so a as I understand it, the plan at the moment is triple bane zone of truth in the morning in yes. the morning <laughs> and uh and unsettling words because that's unsettling an additional words. d8 so we have no at least four potentially 20 to potentially like he's subtracting 20 he's not going to get to that but he's at least subtracting <laughs> four from whatever his role is <laughs> yep and I'll be here as backup and Cal cracks his knuckles. Hey. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. It's, it's trying to look intimidating. And I'll just be like sickeningly sweet to him. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're gonna... just gonna mean mug. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, her mean mug is so All intimidation at disadvantage. A bunch of mean Actually. mugs and spells, and I have a feeling Whirl's gonna give him a taste of his own medicine. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be fun. Actually, I did so, just he read does an have article. inflict wounds now. Yeah. What's up, Kyle? Uh, I did just read an article that said one of the most successful, um, like, torturer people or whatever, somebody who was in charge of getting information out. Like one bonin. of the most successful one did it with kindness. Yeah, like, kindness and bonin, popping, man. Literally just words. like gave them gifts and like took a pilot on like let them borrow a plane and let them fly it around and it was like they almost Whoa. always talked. So like yeah, kindness actually may be an option if we want to explore that. I hate to say it, but there there is a. I mean, I hate. Well, I both love and hate that like everything has to break down into a, a mechanic in D and D, but that mm. that would be like a difference between persuasion and intimidation, which does have different effects. So yeah, that that makes sense. I was throwing it out there in case all this stuff is faulty. Maybe yeah, we killed the kindness. <laughs> <laughs> What's attack roll? Balls. Mm. I keep trying to find things. What should have fucking what taken does, the stokers? for what, a hug. What, yeah, what modifier does? Kindness have, yeah. I'd say persuasion. It, it's going to be persuasion. Role. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what a chakra modifier, yeah. We're going to add uh, a new skill called Nature. Nature. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Nature. <laughs> <laughs> Can you roll for cuddles? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, my goodness. It's a grappling check, but at advantage. But at advantage. <laughs> you can also add your charisma modifier. There exactly. you go. There you go. Extreme um, cuddling. Okay, so we're we're getting to um uh <laughs> dusk. <laughs> so um don't don't let this lead too much, but just to throw I uh you know, stuff out there. Do are we doing watches? Who's resting? Who's is anybody hanging out? Is anybody doing anything? 
before or after taking their re all that jazz. Book. So. <laughs> Book. Um, <laughs> okay. Look. I would say uh, any. I would say we take some amount of watch just to make sure that if he like becomes conscious that he's not gonna like do anything dumb, mm -hmm. just okay. slapping him back to bed or whatever. And and just to make sure I have this straight too, you guys tied him up, right? Uh, we yeah. oh we had a sleight yeah. of sleight of hand check for that. I did write down what Cal got for that. It was with help, or whoever rolled it. Um, yeah. I got I got the result. Okay. Um, so and you you guys would know like his sleight of hand check is basically like if he does decide to struggle against his bindings, it would be his strength or sleight of hand against the sleight of hand that was used to tie it. Um, okay, so so Gert's working on the book. Is that before taking a rest? Uh, sure. I can, like, I guess the way that I was thinking about it was that if uh, someone could be on watch with me so that, like, if something does happen they can be sort of on alert while I'm a little more focused, and then they can be like, hey, Gert, get out of there. If you're on second watch, I'll, uh, I'll go and watch with you because I prefer uh, the darkness so that I can see better. Sure. I'll take a first watch then. Do you want a buddy? Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so that's uh, Iz and Whirl on first watch, Gert Terran on second watch, with Gert being in an activity. Um, Cal, are you resting the full period, or do you want to go on one end or the other, or, or do anything? I should stop forgetting that. No, I'm going to be doing watches. Um, probably the later watch if there's a second or third watch i'll be doing that because i figure if he's going to be out for a while i want to be ready when he's more likely to come to okay so um i i'm keeping watches simple and saying you only need two in order for everybody to get the the full benefit of long rest um so that'll be three people on the second watch so First watch, you can go ahead and make um, perception checks. Cal, uh, if you need to see, I'll nice. let you. Never mind, I don't have that. Never mind. <laughs> Oops, I already used it. Uh, Is got a thirteen, and we all got a six. Whoa! Nice. And Taryn, you're on second watch. You said? I'm. A, I'm on second watch. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Cal, in your, in your sleep, contemplating on all of the events of the four collective keeps, um, you're, you, you do go down feeling a little bit of stress. Um, you have another sort of vision. Uh, it's been described to you as a vision. Um, and even in your slumber, you would recognize subconsciously that a similar event is happening. Um, and you hear words being recited in your head as if you are saying them that you don't recognize. Um, I'm going to send the group uh, the words that come out of your mouth. Um, but it's going to take a skill check <laughs> for anybody to repeat them back to you if anybody attempts, um, because if I'm not mistaken, you are the only person who understands this language. Thick. Um, if the skill check is performance, I will roll on it. <laughs> it, it would be. Um, so... Um, Cal, when you do wake up, you would you would know, like you had you had this. I, I shouldn't have said vision, but you had this event. You didn't see anything. You were you. Were, it was like, it's like you're in another body, um, talking to yourself. 
Okay. Um, but when you wake up, you would not remember exactly what you were saying. You would remember an idea of the, the darkness calling to you and contemplating some sort of action with the darkness. Um, for those of you who are on watch, Cal's talking in his sleep. <laughs> okay. Um, Has he done that before? I think, I don't know. Yeah, he did it once before. I think, I don't know if he's talked in his sleep or if he just, I don't know. Isn't he the snorer? I don't remember. I think he does snore. Just, just a little bit. Sometimes because there's, really just, there's just so much nose, like yeah. there's just all the fire. Wait, what's wait, what's he saying? I don't know. <laughs> what what must we roll? Oh, do I wait? Yeah. So what do we? What are we to roll to try and figure it out? I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying yet. Oh, right. We'll just I, let him know when he wakes up. I guess. I'm realizing I forgot. Yeah. That, like out of the many things I had to write down, this I forgot to write down ahead of time. Um, so I need hmm. two quick seconds. Well, I guess he's done talking now. Yes, he is. He is done. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the rest of you, uh, oh, your perception checks were thirteen and six. Oh. Okay. Um, the evening is really quiet, nothing happening. You're sort of on an off path that you just happen to know goes back the direction you're, you're intending to go. Um, it's not a very well marked or traveled path. So, you know, you're sort of outside regular merchant routes, trade routes, general travel, all of that jazz. And you see nothing and nobody, um, throughout the evening. So, second watch, or I mean, we're transitioning watch at this mm -hmm. point, so. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, Callie, you were, you were talking in your sleep again. I was. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it was kind of weird. Like, didn't really understand what you said, but you, you did. I can try and repeat it if you want. <laughs> Haven't we seen this phrase before? Yes, we have. All right. Oh shit. Do I remember? Uh, can I can I repeat it with my performance check? Um, you can you can roll a performance check, or you can actually say it in person, and we can just use that. Oh. With an auto oh. success. Oh, that'll say it in person. I think it was like, it was like. Talago, Tamago. Potato, potato. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> Chuga? Except, like, grumblier. Chuga. Does <laughs> <laughs> that, um, that ring any bells? It's close. So, Cal. I, it's all nonsense. It's gibberish. I don't <laughs> It uh, roughly sorry, sounds like this. Let me, let me like try this. it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, is that, is that, did that help? Do you want me to do it higher? Is higher gonna, Telago, is that saying? better? No? Telago, right. what? Yes, sure. yes, Trivago. <laughs> that website where you find huts. Oh man. <laughs> What's a website? It's that. Trivago, what? <laughs> it's where there's a lot of spiders. Where they are. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, an area full of webs. <laughs> um okay so so cal it yeah. it was it was close enough uh to the intended phonetic that uh i'll say you would you would <laughs> roughly uh but well enough understand it to be um draconic words and can i confirm nobody else knows draconic confirmed okay okay so I, I sent you in a Discord DM what you would understand that roughly to translate to in common. Mm -hmm. um, and then, okay, so unless there's further discussion, we can go to second watches. 
Enjoy your watch. I'm gonna go to sleep. <laughs> Bye. Um, oh, perception okay. checks for Taryn and Cal. Gert, you're going to need to make um, a constitution save. Hey. Right. High five. We got good. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> and there goes... Somebody's the exhausted. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Oh, no. Okay, so at mm. this point, you oh, actually no. have a choice. Okay. Um, uh. we're, we're early. You can tell in character we're, we're early in this process of sort of deciphering this book, right? Mm. Um and you got this sense from, you know, your, your first bout with trying to read it, get information from it, it sort of like pulled you in. Um, and not even really in a magical way, almost in like a supernatural sense. You were, you were drawn to this thing. You're now connected to, you are attuned to it now, right? Magically attuned mm -hmm. to it, but it's even more powerful than that. Um, and at this point, you like you get a f maybe a paragraph, a few extra sentences in that it's sort of revealing itself in the same sense. It's like it's handwriting itself right in front of you. Um, and you can read and understand the words, but you get to this point where it just feels like your weight doubles and your eyes start to sink. Um, and you have the choice at this point to either stop and try again at another point or risk exhaustion and complete another section. This is hard. And I know that's like, that's terrible. That's the intent. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um. When you say risk exhaustion, like, will I absolutely be exhausted? It if would be another constitution happens, save. Or? Yeah. So okay. the first constitution save was to like auto, like success or risk pool. Now we have mm. to evaluate risk pool. So it, right now it's not guaranteed. You know what? I'm going to risk exhaustion. Okay. Um, so go ahead and roll another con save. It's got to beat a 10. Come on, buddy. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Damn. <laughs> For the alert team, that was an epic All morning. Right. Yeah. <laughs> just, I love it. It's like the peak and valley. Like, yeah. It's the best, yeah. It's the best two moments. That's a, hopefully that's a pattern. Tonight, no, I don't. I don't that I that I fail and then I. <laughs> yeah, you gotta balance. Succeed. That's how you balance out. You get. Okay. You're either super awesome or uh, face plant every time you try to do. I something. feel like that's been like Gert's story for the last three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately, like I don't know that I've gotten just like a a middle of the road roll. It's always been super good. So. Super bad. Yeah. Okay, so where'd it go? Homophobes, there it is. Please don't tell me you're too big. God damn it. Okay. R.I.P. Break it up again. I have been very much enjoying reading these little snippets, oh, though. It's it's really good. I'm so good. I have so many more feelings after I run it like two days ago. I'm like, cool. So. <laughs> Actually, that was a question that um, Andrea and I were talking about the other day. So, I'm the only one who can actually read it right now. Yes. Or read most of it. Um, am I just relaying this to them verbally, or can I, can I write it down for them? You can absolutely take the time and resources which let's be honest I, I'm just going to say are negligible enough necessary mm -hmm. to you know write it down in, an, in another source mm -hmm. um, you know I, technically it requires ink and paper and you know we're already mm -hmm. kind of waving in a way the uh, like resources for spells and all that stuff is just yeah. part of what you do 
on a uh, regular basis when you visit town. It's not important mm -hmm. enough, I think, to th this particular campaign and narrative that we keep track of all of that. It would just bog mm -hmm. us down. So um, we should, however, keep track of the time it would take to do so, especially okay. if you want to do like verbatim. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I would have no problem with, on my end, uh, like paraphrasing for the group you know, in your in your stead, um, in order to avoid the extra time consumption in character to make the whole thing happen. Yeah, because I'll be honest, there's part of Gert who's thinking like this was trapped for a reason. Sure. Like there's a reason that not everyone can read it, and so if she copies it down mm -hmm. word for word. There's going to be another one out that anyone, if we lose that book, can read. Sure. So, so I uh, guess I should ask the question, do yeah. you want to... So it sounds like you're hesitant, at least, about copying it word for word. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like you're kind of debating, like, verbally paraphrasing for everybody or even writing paraphrasing for everybody else? Well, I'm wondering if... And this is going to sound ridiculous, but if I paraphrase in Celestial uh, for a notebook and then just tell everyone mm. what it is, like what I am paraphrasing. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's. Yeah. Also, okay. I can I can read Celestial. Exactly. So exactly. So. And again, it's still going to be paraphrased, so it's not going to be word for word. But most people do not know Celestial. Mm -hmm. And so that wouldn't be something that a random person, if this happened to fall... I mean, it's not going to, because it's going to be on me at all times. But, sure. you know, mm -hmm. if somehow it got lost in a shuffle somewhere... It's not going to be something that someone could just pick up and understand what it is. Okay, so... Would have to look for somebody. Am I understanding correctly? You're, you're intending to paraphrase written for the sake of having personal written record. Yes. Um, but then still verbally paraphrase for your group so they're at least in on the Cliff Notes version of this thing? Yeah. Okay. Um, so... Honest question, then, not meant to be leading in any way. Mm -hmm. um, do you want me to paraphrase for everybody right now uh, the the book that you've learned so far, or do you want to take the time out of game to write your own paraphrasing and send it to the Discord? Yeah, and it, this I'll... would be like a right now and ongoing thing. Sure. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can take the time. Okay. Out of. Yeah, out of game to to paraphrase and do the things. Okay, so then here's what I'm gonna do. Delete all those things from well, telephones. Also, <laughs> also uh, if you like, sorry I, guys. <laughs> if you bring it up, like I could help you, uh, like translate as you're reading it. Like I could write it down as you're reading the actual manual or like the mm -hmm. actual tome, so I could write it down while you're reading, so that's not taking up as much time. Um, I, I'm not gonna, so I'm not gonna, like, go into the Discord and remove permissions so you guys can't okay. read the Tome of Foes. It's mostly just, just under, understand in character that the mm -hmm. now Tome of Foes paraphrased is that, Sam, oh. that is for you to write your paraphrasing of everything, and then for the rest of you, just to keep it honest, in character, that's what you understand. Cool. Does that make sense? Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Um, and for the sake of, uh, well, um, Gert, would you be, would you have been sharing, like, to this point? Do you yes. want me to give, like, a paraphrasing to right now sort of thing? Yeah, totally. That would be great. Okay. So i got to highlight this to make sure. Here we go. Make sure I don't forget what I've given you. Um, so to this point, guys, what the book is talking about, well, it, it opens up with a personal note. Mm -hmm. 
that has uh, an odd year. That's like one of the most notable aspects of it. Um, it's 10 years in the future, actually. Um, it makes reference to uh, Elminster, the wizard, um, another named Mordenkainen, and this like behind the scenes, oh, look at the information I found sort of tone to it. Um, it's clearly written by someone else. Um, then it goes into this chapter one called The Great War, or sorry, The Blood War. And what Gert has understood so far has been several sections of an outline of this, like, ongoing cosmic conflict between demons and devils. Um, and, and just this, like, forever war, Okay. There's more detail on it than that, but um, I think until Gert puts in the um, the exact summarization that she wants to do, that is, I think, at least enough for now. Um, okay, this is a perfect opportunity for us to take our first break. So we'll we'll get up, take a stretch, grab more water or not water if we need to, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back, and the the plan, the interrogation plan is unfurling, or at least the start of it. Um, so we get through the entire night. Uh, the events that we've already described happened. Everybody gets their successful long rest. Gert, it you know, like in in character, you definitely know that there is there was a very real risk of overexerting. And it'll it, it'll be at at least that level moving forward. Okay. Um, you would have like you're you're at a corporeal connection in a way with this book now, so you would understand that the toll will be at at least at that level moving mm -hmm. forward. Okay. Okay. Um. Jolliver is still unconscious at this point, and now the new day is ahead of you. What's happening? Uh, so, do we want to just take Jolly and put him just in the in middle of the ground somewhere? Yeah. I mean, yeah, let's just do that, and I'll just uh, start pulling him over to a tree or a nearby. Uh, place away further away from the camp so he's not directly in the middle of it and start to wake him up okay right. um but maybe before we start waking him up what what information are we looking for and then who wants to interrogate uh, i would i would love to help question. with things but i'd also love a second person like just in case if we have another person willing to be zone of truth i mean we all know a lot of uh, important information, so. Right, but he doesn't like immediately he get the information. It's just we answer if he's if he asks, and we can still. Asks. We have to. Oh, what's the phrasing on zone? Can you ping zone of truth so that we know what like exactly? Yeah. Uh, move all the way down here. Plus, that way we know what he's working with, and then also we know what we're working with. Yeah. Uh... Cat display. There we go. There we go. You create a magical zone that uh, that guards against deception, fifty foot radius, mm. centered on a point of your choice within range. Uh, a creature in the spell's area uh, must make a wisdom save on their first time entering, and then on a failed save, the creature can't speak a deliberate lie within the radius. Uh, so you're not like forced to tell the truth about stuff right. without without being provoked. Right, and then an affected creature is aware of the spell and can thus avoid answering questions which it would normally respond with a lie. Yeah, so I, I'll I'll go full disclosure on that and say I'm not a huge fan of that aspect. Cool. Um, I think it makes it way too open ended, and I could just be like, no, nope, I'm not telling you anything. Fair. Like fuck that. Um, so it, I will put it on the table that I will not, I will not ever do that. 
Um, because it's a charisma save, I feel confident um, going into the zone of truth and either being able to save against it or uh, answering dodgily enough that I'm telling the truth without telling the truth. Gotcha. So, um, also, uh, the caster of zone of truth will know right. uh, if if anybody attempted to resist, and they will know successes and failures. Right. And then I am oh. automatically uh, oh, yeah. compelled to tell the truth. So, yeah. Just so everyone knows that. Mm. And, and anybody oh, can okay. choose to just fail without resisting. Right. So mm-hmm. the caster will know if anybody resisted first. Yeah. And if they didn't. And then second, if they resisted, whether they succeeded or failed. Okay. Uh, so you guys, somebody's dragging him up to a tree. Right. What do we want to ask yeah. him? Oh, you're talking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who? Who told? Yeah. Yeah. So who? Or like, uh, who are you getting your information your, from? Right. Who's giving you your information? Um, and who's giving them their information? Because right. he might be getting information secondhand from the not like source. Like a party. Yeah. Uh, okay. Out of game question, Cal, did you tell us about the uh, the coffin? No, we haven't had a chance to really talk about it, I don't think. Okay. Uh, so where are, you, where are you getting your information? Uh, are there more of you than what we saw at River Guard? I feel like that would be important. Because we have 10 minutes. We have 10 minutes to ask him what he wants, what we want to. No. Um, Gar Shatter Keel, he talked about. Who is Gar Shatter Keel? Well, he said future leader of the Desert and Valley. Uh, so I'd say, what does that mean? What yeah. what is are his plans? That kind of situation. And then anything else? We just say, what are you stealing? Like, what are you good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we know he's stealing stuff. We know that that's why we were brought in. Why he thought we were valuable. No. Do we want to ask about the orbs and if they have one, or do you think that would be giving away too much information? If I mean, the follow-up know. question would be, what happens next with this guy? Yeah. Because it, yeah. Does anyone not want to take him back to Red March? I feel like he should be put away somewhere. Somewhere. That's the key word there. Yeah. Uh, for the record, I did not finally land on no killing him. Um, but if that, like, if anybody in the group has a problem with that, you can PM me, and I can anonymous, anonymously say, okay, nope, group decision, no, no killing the guy. Um, but if we do decide to eventually kill him, we're just gonna make it a quick, humane thing, and, right. and be done with that. Yeah, I uh, I don't think we should mention orbs at all, Fair. unless gotcha. he brings it up. What about uh, what if we bring up weapons in general, and then that may, maybe slips out? Not not we slip out orb, but he messes up. And tells like, us are you smuggling that. weapons? And then if he yeah. says yes, mm-hmm. what kind of weapons? Sure. Cool. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so, Whirl, did you want to do most of the asking, and I stay back, since I'll be under the effect? Um, yeah, I mean, I think you, we're both going to be under the, we could both potentially be under the effect, um, but I am fine doing the, most of the asking. If you guys want to yell shit at me from 15 feet away, tight, I'll take it. Everyone else who's standing outside, you can all yell. Uh, so yeah, I'll wake him up and... We need to start. All right. Wait, he's... hold on. Those are mostly low numbers, so. Right, but what's happening? You don't know any of that. That. <laughs> <laughs> don't sh- so let's. Uh, uh, we ready to bane? Do we want to slap uh, him awake first, and and then bane him? How are we doing this? Well, <laughs> so I was I, I was actually you said wondering. something else entirely. <laughs> <laughs> I hear, I hear oh, what you hear now. Well, I hear what you heard now. This is a 14 and um, up channel. 
Anywho. So, uh, <laughs> that slap him awake is 14 so, and up. Oh Christ! Sorry, Sam. Go ahead. Something that I was thinking was since we've got him pretty well sedated, right? Do we want to try to heal him for anything? Um. I... Do I have an option to just like heal for the minimum amount? Like, can I say I only want to heal him for like two you points know what? to for... wake him up? Yeah, I'm going to say since there is the option for some spells to like auto fail for your benefit when it's coming from your collective plan sort of thing. Are you doing the like kill him with kindness thing? Like trick him into thinking you're helping him out? Um, well, I was all I was thinking just like a gentle way to wake him up. <laughs> Instead oh, sure. Of just slapping him. But, you know, um, we can slap him, too. Yeah. You, <laughs> for that, we'll say, like, if you just want to slap him awake, I'm not going to, like, make you roll sure. to see if you damage him and kill him sort of thing. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah. we can, just yeah. narratives. I'm, I'm a fan of narrative stuff overriding mechanics when it makes sense, so... Okay. Absolutely. If you just want to like slap him to wake him up, can there's, I take there's him no awake? Risk. You can Do it. absolutely. That's, that's absolute torture. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, rub the soles of his feet. Every yeah, I'm just gonna <laughs> do that I'm knuckle like, in, the, in the rib thing. So, so the way that we the way that we've tied him up. Okay. All right. We've tied him up in like a in a crisscross applesauce sort of way. So like his this? feet are. Well, so his feet are crisscross applesauce, right? Okay. Um, sure. He's, like, sitting. All right. Yeah. Are they, like, straight so, out? Like, going down a water slide style? No, no, no. So it's, like... He's um, sitting... Cross-legged. Like, with his legs, yeah. Yeah. He's sitting, oh, with sitting his legs cross-legged. Crossed. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's sitting cross-legged. Um, and so that way I can tickle his foot while also, like, flicking his ear. <laughs> 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 no friend. This is the kind of torture I'm on board with. Oh, hey, you're we're hilarious. having a terrible time, everybody. <laughs> okay. This is the kind of torture I'm on board with. <laughs> All right. Tickling know. a toe, flicking an ear. Yes. Kind of Good morning, friend. <laughs> Uh, so where are his arms? Are they in front, like straight jacket, or are they behind him, like handcuffs? Um, I think they would have just been like at his side, right? If we just wanted to like quickly rope him up. Yeah, I I I'm cool that. with you guys like collectively figuring that out. I know sure. the tie up already happened, but we didn't talk yeah. details, so. Mostly I want to know what I got to role play. Foot. Do I have to role play like? Yeah, I'm. I'm trying. I'm already cross-legged. Like, do I put my hands behind yeah. my chair, or do I do I put them up here? Oh, yeah. No, probably behind your chair. Am I doing the marker. Harder, harder oh, okay. to get to. I feel like behind chair. Behind chair is like yeah. like the most uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like or like, like least he, helpful. Like, or like while he's awake, we like untie his hands and then nope. like retie them behind the tree. Or while he's asleep, not awake. Yeah. Well, he was oh, okay. It's like, okay. we do shit while he's awake. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not what we I do. We bang him, we talk to him. That's all we do. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Great. Yeah, I like cool. that. Cool. So. Wait, did we end up in, in like hands in front or hand behind? Hands behind. Hands okay. behind the chair. Okay. So yeah. I'm doing this. Mm hmm. All right. And, and then he gets tickled and flicked. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Get ready, gang. Tickle, 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 tickle. Oh, on. oh, shit. What the? Oh, <laughs> Good <stop>. morning. <laughs> and I cast Bane. Ooh, okay. And that's a charisma save, yeah? Yes. Yes. Mm, okay. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to whisper this. You guys don't get to see anything. Oh no! Oh no! Well, we're doing all three regardless. Okay. And then, well, as as soon as we like hear him be conscious, he just gets over like a smack. Yeah. Vein. <laughs> all right. I will. I will additionally 
Bane him. I will also additionally Bane him. Hold on, how do I roll for Bane? I don't. Uh, click cast it. next to Bane. Oh yeah, hold on. Boop. That would have been... Of course. And I'll be into, I can't do. I can't. Do <laughs> okay. And, and I'll then, be into. And then real quick, I'm gonna flick him in the nose and go later and run away. <laughs> I love you. Oh my god. I uh, for my unsettling words. Oh, man. I'm gonna say good morning. We're gonna have a little conversation. Oh, and that, that is a, so that's all right. a total of one, it's, is that four? It's a D8, it's one D8. Uh, it's, it, he doesn't have to roll for anything, it's just we subtract that from his next saving throw. Oh, that's why I wanted to do it last. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh yeah, so if you're whispering, or how do we know what to roll? So, no, the, so Bardic, the, it's a Bardic Inspiration, but instead of being like, high five Bardic Inspiration, it's fuck you, unsettling words. Mm -hmm. So it's and the same guy. it has guy. to happen on his next It has to happen on his save. next saving throw. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'll need you guys to let me know if, like, Bane's not a save, right? Oh, no, it is. Yeah. But you already did yeah, it. Yeah, Bane is, is attacks and saves. Save. Okay. You subtract a d4 from everything. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to help you guys out. We should have okay. flipped that. So I'm gonna roll that first for the first bane because if Wait, you guys are trying to like, but the point ahead. was we the point was we wanted to stack all the banes and then also the unsettling words because otherwise the unsettling words only affects one of the banes and I, I think we're better off. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Yeah, Use, Dude, ch chancing the, the bardic inspiration on the big spell as opposed to one of the little spells. Yes. Yeah. So we wanted to so stack him on the banes. We're doing the Banes first, and then the Unsettling Words last, right. no matter mm -hmm. what. Oh, I got so it. So that no okay. matter, yeah, so that yeah. Got it. we have potentially three Banes, and then last, no matter what, he gets the Unsettling Words. Because then all of yeah. that comes Because Unsettling will... Words isn't a roll. Correct. Right. It's just a, well, it's yeah. just a, yeah, save sex. Also, right. in, so in all order... of that is before the Zone of Truth, then? Correct. Yeah, yes. okay, okay. Yeah. It's so that hopefully the zone of truth can hit. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, or Taryn, you were just, you were gonna say something. Uh, I was just gonna say for order, do we want to have a specific order because uh, Gert's DC is lower, or how do we? I mean, they've that? all like it's gonna be random anyway. I'd say. It doesn't really matter. Just yeah. Stay down the list. I'll just save you yeah. guys a little bit of time. Only one succeeded. That's fine. Um, so Perfect. we're at yeah. minus, well, 2D floor. No, no, that was that was for the saves. So for the Bane. That was for the save for Bane. That was for right. the second Bane. That was for the unsettling words. There's no save against there, unsettling words. Unsettling, unsettling words just is. Just there. Okay. Yeah, unsettling, here, do you want me to, I don't think I can ping it is the problem. Uh, if you go to your- Yes, I can, can hold on. Maybe? That's yeah, right. Features yeah, trade display on VTT. Uh, why are you hiding from me? That's all right. I've got it. <laughs> okay. This is what happens when you try to stack okay. multiple effects. So I've got a guaranteed D8 subtracted from saving against Zone of Truth. Correct. Yes. Because I failed from unsettling words. You can't save against it. You just, like, it just is. Oh, yeah, it that, just, that just is. Yeah. You just, oh, oh, you auto fail. Yeah. Um, I still have to roll the D8 right. to subtract it yeah. from my saving throw against Zone of Truth. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. Um, but that, too. yeah, that just happens. Okay. And then from what I understand, you, you beat two of the Banes, but you failed one of the Banes, so we're also adding, a, subtracting a D4. Yep, also, so I'm against, so saving against the Zone of Truth, I'm at minus 2D4 minus D8. Sick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of that's, that's, that's a guaranteed yeah. three. Guaranteed <laughs> three. <laughs> to, like I yeah. said, up to 16. Yeah. It's not going to be 16, but okay. fucking shit would that be cool. So the Banes are going to last a minute. The right, the unsettling words is 10 minutes, and Zone of Truth is 10 minutes, right? 
Yeah. Yep. Okay. But we're, we're, we're really only concerned with the initial saving throw right. against the Zone of Truth. So. Yes, because there is only one. Right. What, you okay. ready? So, as soon as uh, I, like, uh, magic just hits him, uh, I'm going to instantly cast as Gert runs out of the radius. So that's another charisma save. Okay. Oh, I'm so scared of you guys. I'll, I'll ping that as well. <laughs> I already pinged it, never mind. Um, you know he tries to resist. Mm-hmm. You know he fails. Tight. Can, can we know uh, how much he failed yeah. by? <laughs> uh, what, what, what were the, what were not the much. numbers? Really? It, it was actually not much. Um, Sick. Oh, guys. Uh, also, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to try against uh, uh, I'm going to try a charisma save against. Um, gotcha. That's, that's just a that's just a fourteen charisma save. Uh, so I just click charisma. Saving charisma throw. save. Oh, not wrong check. one. Ah. Uh, oh well. So, <laughs> so I also uh, tell the truth. That's fine. You're also under the. I tell a version of the truth. <laughs> I tell I tell my truth. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right, we got 10 go. minutes. I'm setting a timer just to get this. Yep. Yep. Okay, right. he, uh, you're, you're like tickle flicking him awake, and yep. he's just going to be like, oh, shit, what the? Go ahead, world. Hi. Um, you remember us. We just dragged your ass out of your building. Oh, yeah, you guys. What's yeah. up? Hey, you, uh, you know like a lot about us. Um, huh? You know, where did you get that information? Oh, I told you that. Tell me you can't remember what I told you yesterday. Uh, do you, can you, can I get the names of the people that uh, gave you this information? No. I can't get the names, so will you tell me the names? I cannot tell you the name. Do you know the cities they're from? Nope. Do you know the friends they have? No. Do you know the gods they worship? Ooh. <laughs> it's magic. Ooh. I Oh, that's a neat trick. I think I know a guy or three that can do that too. That's cool. Um no, that's it's my best kept secret. I only know what I need to know. Savvy. All right. Um, so speaking of gods, uh, who's this, who's this Gar Shatterkeel you were so god, eloquently? You, you think he's a god? Oh, I did good. <laughs> yeah. All right, who's this dude? Who's Ooh, this yeah. entity? Who's this also piece of shit, Gar Shatterkeel? He's, he's, he's the lord of water, future ruler of the, of the valley, and he's gonna have the whole thing. Lord of water? Was that all you were saying? Lord of water? Uh-huh. Um, he's, what's the plan? he's in this, he's in this, like, yeah, half with it sort of sense. Mm. Um, so, uh, so future leader of the Desert Valley, that's a, that's a big title. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, uh, what does that mean? It's, uh, ruler of, of the valley. I don't know how else to say that. Mm, what He's what been, needs to happen? What needs to happen for him to rule the valley? Well, he needs he needs the a little time, I guess, for the, the things. You know. Is that a? I don't know what they're is called. A, is it a ball? Is Something like that. Yeah, some kind is of there, sphere. They're concentrating magic. Kind of like are you. they? Are they dangerous? Are the are the concentrated balls of magic dangerous? Probably, uh, you, not for me. <laughs> you, why why are they not dangerous for you? I've been given a promise, and Ooh. Gar Gar keeps his promises. Ooh, prom he gave uh, me what, that what kind whole of promise? Castle. He gave me the yeah? castle. Yeah. Cool. Uh -huh. Um, what's the what was the promise for? The castle and safety. Safety from what? Your orbs. 
They're my orbs. Why are they my orbs? Well, you're you're the one calling them an orb. I I don't I know. I did not. It's... I have not yet said the word orb until you said the word orb. Hi, I tricked you into saying orb. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. Oh, look, it's my hand. Oh, and it's high five in my other hand. Um... <laughs> Got him. I tried so hard not to say orb, guys. Um... <laughs> So River Guard Keep is, is pretty cool, huh? Do you well, like it? It's fucking castle. Of course I like yeah. it. Yeah? How long have you been working on it? Two years. Ooh. Uh, you said there was two years up above, is what someone said. What were you guys doing below it? I don't know. You only got there two years ago? Yeah. So do you know who was there before? Nobody. Um, so what all of are you, are you smuggling? You, you were like real stoked to talk to us steely people, uh, and me, the talky one. So, uh. Oh, yes. The Guild of Thieves. You want to join up? You're a pretty quick talker. So, yeah, you can tell. Um, what, what thieving or have you been thieving? What? Now, what have you been stealing? <laughs> Anything good? Come on. Money, you know you valuables, books. I okay, remember my guy took him along for a ride. That was fun, wasn't it, Dragon Man? Oh, he Over there oh, with your dragon face. You are correct. That is a face. Um, what kind of books? Ones that people wanted money for. What kind of valuables, I think you said? Yeah, I mean... Jewels, pots. Anything big? What's your favorite? What's your favorite thing that you've smuggled through there? Him. When did you smuggle him through there? Well, I didn't. But I know the guy who did. He works for me. What's his name? I don't know. Him who? Sorry, I am so confused He's right definitely now. pointing I, I at know. Cal. He's pointing oh, at Cal. Okay. Guys, I have some shit to say when we're done with this, but we got four more minutes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what, what do uh, the people look like? You don't oh, know yeah, what are you don't know. You don't know anything. What do they look like? Yeah, Not what are you guys? Do they look like do they look like any of us or do they look like humans like you? Yeah, we're all boring. You are fascinating group. Do they wear huh. any special clothes? Uh, I don't know what you mean by special. Like do they do they match? Do they all have like a matching set of something? Sort of. Do they Yeah, like what? Is it like do they have like a pin? Do they have like are, does their hair all match? Yeah. What is it? I don't think it'd really be that obvious. It's actually kind of hard for me to describe. You try but, it. But uh, I would recognize him. Okay. Is it a hand okay. signal? Is it a... How, how would you recognize them? What about them is recognizable? Um, well, it's mostly the boots. Mm. What about them is recognizable? Their boots? Do they have a certain stamp on the bottom? Are they a certain type of boot? No, they just Do they all have really tiny feet? Show them a certain way. Hmm. Can mm. can you can you uncross your legs and show us how you did show them? <laughs> nope. You tied those up. Did we tie them up? You did. <sighs> That's why he fucking asked. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, and I, can I just stand in certain ways until he's like, yes, it's like that? That would probably um, take too you, long. You can make a performance check. All right, I'm going to try and stand in a bunch of different ways. So you're going to tell me if that's right. I don't know what I rolled. 14. 14. He's going to look at the other, the, the rest of the group and be like, <laughs> I'm tied up and she's dancing for me. I bet she doesn't do that Not for you. 
If we if we untie your you legs, know, there's you other things to... we could do that are, don't include <laughs> dancing, and you're not gonna like them. If, anyway, if we untie your legs, are you gonna try to hurt us? I don't think I can really do that. Is can you toss uh, can you toss us a dagger, please? <laughs> can I toss you a dagger? <laughs> <laughs> Do you, like, I think do you I want it in your hand? Do you want me to like hit a specific point? What you looking for? <laughs> do you want it in your hand? I mean, do you want it in his throat? Like, where, where I mean, are we talking? I have a dagger. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you want if you want some extra style points, could you un could you cut the rope off his legs from a distance, please? I also have a dagger. If we just want to slice him off. Our... Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hold on. No, she's already <laughs> doing it. I want to see this. All right, we're running out of time. Go, don't go fast. Go fast. I do it. Is that I make an think. attack roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Nailed it. You nailed it. Great. Nailed oh. it. You could have knocked him out. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Yeah. <laughs> Rogue shit. Okay. <clears throat> um, so the <laughs> knife just goes and uh, <laughs> just quick flicks the, the bindings right off of his ankles so, and his mm. feet sort of spring forward. And he, he like, Kicks his he kicks his feet a couple times, and then almost like clicks his heels together. Um, everybody, make a perception check. Perception. Uh, he whispers. Oh, twenty. Place like home. Not natural. <laughs> but I we have a sixteen and then or we got fifteen, sixteen, twelve, nineteen, twenty. Nineteen. Yeah. Okay. Um, Callan Whirl, you'd notice that as he sort of clicks his feet together, he also sort of, like, thrusts his shoulders a little bit. Mm -hmm. As if the feet aren't the only part of the signal. Hey, guys, we're, we're not much time left. A couple more questions. What should we, what do we want? Um, what do you know about my brother? Also, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like an orc. He talks like one, too. Cool, he totally is. That's information I knew, too. Woo! Uh-huh. Hey, what was in that basement? Oh, yeah. Basement. What basement? There was a there's a secret door that your, like, blue friend sneaked out of? What was down there? Oh, that's that's not a basement. It's a secret uh, doorway. Right. What was in the secret doorway? Boats. Oh, more boats. Where did the boats go? Saw... You can tell that at the like, but to this point, he's been like just sort of playful and goofy with it. But mm -hmm. at that point, he just, like actually tries to shut himself up. He's trying to resist the magic, and he's failing. Well, what kind of boats? Where are the boats going? Rowboats. Rowboats. Uh, West. What's west? We're... I don't know. What were you saying, Taryn? I know that I was going to ask the same question. Who rows the boats? Whoever's inside of them. <laughs> <laughs> How many performance are there? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Taryn. I was so in character. Say that again. <laughs> Uh, I, I said, uh, I said, how many of your informants are there? Oh. Um, I don't know. A lot. What's your least favorite of the other cults? Ooh, fire. Mm, why? Because they're fire. Fuck them. Did, uh, did you by chance send anyone to Scarlet Moon Hall? Me? No. Did, did Gar? Did your, did your cult? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. What are you most afraid of? Gar. Hmm. But I thought he was going to save you. He made me a promise. Why are you afraid of him then? Oh, I don't have to be actively afraid of him to answer that question. Mm 
didn't answer the question. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> How dangerous is he? And what makes him dangerous? He has this power. I don't really know where it comes from, but uh, I'm not really one to ask too many questions. Just what I need. So, I trust it. What does what does Gar want to do when he becomes the future leader of the Desert Valley? I have no idea. Mm. I'm sure it'll be fabulous. So you just. You just trusted him on his promise that he would. Uh, oh, get, oh get he, a he showed me that he can, you know, generate torrents and and crazy magic. It's crazy magic. I don't want to be on the business end of that shit. Nope. You haven't met our friends. We have some very powerful friends too. I think I might have. Okay, or at least my who people do you think have. Who, who do you think you've met that we would know? Constable Harburg, uh, the bubbly, bouncy lady who runs that poultry shop. Um, oh, I forget her name. That doesn't matter. Um, there's a leader in Yartar. Yeah. A, a little overzealous okay. man in uh, Feathergale Spire. I think you took care of him, though. Uh, and what would happen if we brought you back to uh, Red Larch, where Constable Harper is? Would you would you stay locked up if you were to be in prison? I would be in Red Larch. What about my other question? Would you stay locked up? I'd probably try not to be. Would, would you have any friends that would willingly let you out? Probably. In March? You know their names? Nope. Are these the same people with the boots? Probably. What color are their eyes? They're all over the place. Red, blue, green, yellow. He's looking at you, Taryn. You're just naming you colors. I have purple eyes. Yeah, he, he specifically did not name off that color, but he's looking at you. I think, uh, I think we're going to take a field trip. Okay, so at this point, you guys know you're running out of time. Yeah. Um, so we're going to wrap up. Tell me more about smuggling Cal. Uh, well, didn't really get much out of it. But you did go off on your own. He's looking at you now, Cal, as he's addressing the question. I don't feel like you guys really, uh... You know, wholesale trust each other. And, you know, that's always fun to work with. When was this, uh, smuggling? Of Cal. Uh, okay, out of character, I don't remember the exact time frame, but he would give it to you, like, on the button. Was it, like, a week ago at this point? Plus? Follow up, would it have been the time that he <laughs> went to Waterdeep and used the water? Because the river goes straight through the fucking keep. Yes, Cal, the timetable okay. he gives is exactly the time that you went from Yartard down the river to the shortcut to get to Red Larch. But that wasn't, like... That wasn't a smuggling. No, nope. I was. You chartered a boat. Why? So why do you keep referring to it as smuggling? Oh, because for hey. me it was. Hey, uh, Cal, what did uh, what did the person who was what would it be sailing, uh? the boat that you chartered, but did he look noticeable in any way? Uh, 
I'll be honest. I think in and out of character, none of that really was eventful to me. It, it was not. Out of character, totally well, confirming it was not eventful. Yeah, um, it was just a normal boat trip from one place to another. Yep. The guy didn't talk very much. You gave him a couple coins, and he gave you a ride down the river. That was it. Mm-hmm. Why would it be smuggling? I'm talking to uh, to Jolly, not Cal. Well, we carried precious cargo. But smuggling usually refers to something illegal. Well, I guess in this case it's in my favor because it wasn't, huh? What do you think is going to happen to uh, River Guard Keep now that you're not there? Mm, abandonment, if I had my best guess. Really? They're all like, you are so important to leadership that they can't run the place up without the, you? Uh, well, I was kind of the guy. Um, mm. But you don't seem still to have am, much information. As long as I'm here. Really <laughs> seem that impressive right now. Yeah. Oh, For yeah. someone who's the guy. Well, you know, looks and deception really and all that. <laughs> Well, I don't know. We kind of proved that you weren't that great last night, so... Yeah, we kind of kicked your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Glad you acknowledge that. Just want that to be the last thing you remember before whatever happens. <laughs> oh. Uh, two hey, more guys. questions. Cool. You're running out of time. Yeah. yeah. I, I, would just, I was going to say real quick, hey, guys, do we want to extend our time or do we want to to go in just for now i don't think also, we're gonna like hey aka do you want me to recast i don't think we're gonna get anything else out of him like yeah and i don't think until... yeah i don't think he's gonna uh fail the next one yeah so the banes have run out yeah, yeah. definitely uh I don't have another question right now. It's mm. a lot of quick talking, holy shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Cult of the Crashing Wave. What's other than making sure that Gar becomes the leader of the Desert and Valley, what, what is the goal of the cult? As far as I know, that's it. Are they all thieves? No. Just mine. Uh, and then that would be the time because that was two questions. That was two more questions, yeah. yeah. So at that point, he would sort of like blink and shake it off a little bit and say, Oh, you're good. Yeah, I know. Want some water? But uh, being dragged through, uh, being dragged through some mud probably doesn't feel that great. Could be worse. Uh, can I just like slap him back unconscious? <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely can. Should I? I'll be like, well, thanks for our conversation. Uh, <laughs> hey, look, look over here, and then just slap in the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's an unarmed strike, but we're not gonna roll for it because he's like, fucking, he's fucking tied up and yeah, yeah, and at one hit point anyway, so. I mean, yeah. it would, it, at best, I think I can only do one damage because <laughs> I have super buff arms. Y'all are strong for Okay, so we are still, uh, like, early in the morning. That's only been about 10 minutes in-game. Um, this is a good, I think, moment to take another brief break, if that's cool with you guys. Sure. Yeah. All right, cool. We'll be right back.
okay, we're back with the, uh, oh no, interrogation session's done. He's knocked out again, yeah? I gotta roll and die for that. Got an epic slap to the face. Yep. Okay, noted. Uh, it's still, it's still morning. The day's yours. What's up? Um, so, since he obviously has connection, multiple connections in Red Larch, should we go back there or drop him off somewhere? So, better? I know that we're in this, like, I don't trust nobody ever anymore, blah, blah, blah. But, Gert still trusts constable implicitly um and if i think i have a something where we can like put a quiet bubble around okay. right mm -hmm. we Ooh. can get constable uh in the quiet bubble mm -hmm. say we got this guy we did this thing he knows too much who like what do you think about who might know too much yeah mm -hmm. and can you find a place to put him like we need to get him yeah. in without anyone knowing that he's in do we have something we can cover the cart with you do um okay. probably you have bed rolls eh, not, so not really are there are there there aren't like actual blankets in the bed rolls are there uh, we'll say for the sake of it, yeah. Like, you have your own bed rolls, and then you have maybe an extra blanket a piece. So, if we wanted to, we could attach the blankets to the top of the wagon, and that would look less suspicious than having random, like, random coverings on it. Sure. Um... And if, if anyone asks, we can just say that we got hot because of the sun. Yeah. So we wanted to cover it. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, I just... Well... See, fuck. My guess. Gert, what's no. with this language all of a sudden? <laughs> She's been hanging out with, Gert, with a world too much. <laughs> <laughs> Swears like it's her job. Um, I love that, like... Have I just not been cursing? Not as in previous. I mean, I've been cursing a lot, so, like, no one's been cursing like <laughs> I've been cursing. <laughs> I just curse a lot in my life in general. So. I think I think you've just been sort of like so focused on the task at hand, and there's like always been a task at hand. Yeah. Uh, that like you just haven't had much of a wandering mind, and your okay. wandering mind is where the swears come out to play. Yes. <laughs> true. That's true. You've also we done a lot of talking to like children and animals, and you tend to also swear that. Yes. either of them. Uh, yes. You're like, fuck bird. you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so, I. The, uh, the curse came out there because the folks uh, at the River Guard know that he's gone, which means they might know who to contact to let their sure. people know. So, like, the folks in Red Large may already know that he's coming. Right, because um, my hope is that we can find a place that only the constable and 
his I mean we could are, see how it, are we well. feeling about the the dark elves it was it dark elves no they were dark yes. elves. yeah they it were dry. yeah they were weird I didn't I wasn't there actually so never mind yeah they were uh they were unable to see Feathergill's spire mm -hmm. and back in um uh, what oh, was, I was the there, right. with Aurea. Mm -hmm. where, where was that? Uh, yeah, so it was a total of five locations that they couldn't see. Um, right. Lance Rock, so it's southwest of Red, Red Larch, mm -hmm. that X, and then the four keeps. Right. Those were like specific places that they told you they could, or the one the one who told you he had the gift of divination in, in his words, um, were like locations that he couldn't see. And then his and like then... his his experience of your memories world were mm -hmm. like distorted and incomplete. Right. Because he would like hear sounds turned into like static. Right. Right. I mean, if we're concerned about them getting to the constable or them getting him out of the hands of the constable, we could always check in and see how Renwick would feel. That's a long shot, but he would definitely be more secure there. Yeah. He didn't seem to know Renwick. Who? He, he didn't. We didn't ask him. No, he's out. Yeah. yeah. Was that, was that a DM ask or a, or a character ask? No, it was a DM ask. Who didn't seem okay. to know Renwick? Yeah. Uh, Jolly? Jolly. He mentioned him, didn't he? Unless that was no. somebody else he was no. talking about. He didn't mention Renwick. I don't remember him mentioning Renwick. He mentioned no. he, he went through different people at, the, at like the different places we went to. And so no. there was one person that he specifically mentioned, not he by said name. The he mentioned the yeah. Feathergill. So my guess was it was yeah. Thurl because he, he said something along the lines of like loquacious or spirited. And he said like, you took care of him for me. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't think- There was think... another time I think, I, I don't know. I might be he, right did. Right. Think... he did mention the constable. Did. Yeah. He mentioned the constable. He mentioned the other butcher woman and she yeah. worked with Raylan's dad. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, so, so, realistically, like, Yolanta potentially is still un harmed. Um, yeah. My other thought, this is stupid and it's way too far away, but. Mini no Mandiver. That is the other person. Mini. Mandiver. Mini, yeah. yeah. Um, other well, thought. Sorry, continue. I was going to say, well, if he was in contact with Minnie, that wouldn't be too unreasonable since she worked with someone that was possibly involved with the Black Earth, which could have just been something for another cult. And Braylon did do that weird hand signal. Mm -hmm. Did he we click his lot. heels when he did it? I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, I think we should stay in Red Larch for a while. Yeah, like totally play it down. Like we fixed everything, hooray, and just mm -hmm. chill in Red Larch for a little bit until we do maybe some other. Act like thoughts. we're sightseeing, yeah. looking for stuff that we haven't been able to do before. Have so, a vacation, get grown. Yeah. So I actually don't mind the idea of seeing if Renwick will do us a solid. Because, <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I'm gonna hold on to this guy. Maybe kill him. Because if Renwick kills him, then at least we didn't do it. I yep. talk to him. Just like yeah, just lock just... him in Drool's room, and it'll be fine. Exactly. Well, that's what <laughs> I'm saying. Fair. Like that's what I'm thinking. They've already right. got the prisons down yeah. there. Um, he can keep an eye on him, and then yeah. if he gets mouthy, <laughs> Renwick doesn't really deal well with that so mm -hmm. Not it's true and also well Renwick might be able to get some information that we can't out of him that's true he's also probably willing to go places that we aren't that's a guarantee I'm not. yeah <laughs> says uh 
and then all the music cuts out and it's just a zoom in on Izzy's face. <laughs> <laughs> That's a guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> So how long would it take us to get back to Sacred Stone if we do that? It would about be a, a slight backtrack. Um, yeah. About a half day extra, a full day from now. So cool. you would Patrol. need, you would, uh, you'd get to about, oh wait, no, 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 no. I think I have the scale all wrong, guys. Hang on a second. Oral, we don't have. Oh yeah. We don't have to go there because I also have sending, and I could ask right, that but way. I, I mean, we might still have to deliver him. I'm just thinking in general, how long, in yeah, addition yeah. to our time, will it take? If you okay, so at the point you're at, it would take you about a day and a half to get to Red Larch, or mm -hmm. the rest of today to get to Sacred okay. Stone. Oh. So that'll only be like two days yeah. max. Yeah. Do you do you want to call him or or do you have a better shot at it is? <laughs> I mean, I can't uh, call him, but I, if <laughs> if one of you guys wanted to. Wait a minute! I'm getting out. this way wrong. Um, I'm getting uh, a we call. won't we won't retcon <laughs> anything based on if I figure out that this was way wrong, but it will be a correction moving forward. Okay. Give me two seconds. Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, okay. Correction. And if you guys wouldn't mind helping me remembering this moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, with horse and cart being the slower of your two current modes of travel, uh, mm -hmm. you can travel a little over 30 miles per day, like at a not grueling pace. This scale on this map is correct. So it would only take okay. you, what was that? Six hours? Yeah. Oh, that's a lot Not even, than... like yeah. half a day. Not even half a day, quarter of a day. Right, cool. Yeah. Sure. So yeah, we can six potentially hours. drop him off and then almost make it back to Red Larch the rest mm -hmm. of this day. Well, maybe not, so like halfway to Red Larch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 24. Oh. That's 30 in a day, but it's late afternoon. Okay. Or late morning. Calling Renwick time? Yes. Yes. Don't uh, want to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Your goth friend uh, says hi. <laughs> Your goth friend says hi. <laughs> um, all right, let's, uh, I need help counting. All right, I got it. I got you. Right, uh, I'll so, go up to, do you want me to go up or down? Oh, uh, we're doing sending? Go. Yes, okay. I'm gonna do sending. All right, I'll okay, go up and then I'll so... tell you when you're down to five. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> you can you uh, can formulate the sentence before you cast the spell. We, sure. Yeah, yeah, keep it fair. We'll okay. figure that out. So, I'll still help. So the fir first draft, uh, Renwick, we need you to hold a prisoner. We don't know if it's safe to bring him anywhere else. I think you have seven left. Please help. Your goth friend says hi. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll do it. That'll work. Here we go. Amazing. Uh, I'll cast sending and that will be my message. I'm not going to be stoked on that prisoner thing. I, I'm gonna be straightforward with you guys. I need a minute for that. That's okay. Um, can we take a quick break? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. We'll be right Just back. Modest. 